Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're gathered here for the live CR Teardown with Audit, and I'd like to extend a special thank you to Sean, uh, the co-founder and CEO of Audit, for running these with us on a monthly basis. Replo and Triple Well are thrilled to present this event where we had the privi privilege of hearing from Sean. Uh, he brings decades of expertise in designing digital experiences for some of the world's top brands. And today he'll be sharing actionable tips to optimize your websites, improve conversion rates, and build brand trust. This is a unique opportunity for all of us to gain insights from a leader in the field and learn how to leverage Audit's brand for CRO approach. But before I turn it over to Sean, I'd like to quickly introduce both of today's event hosts, Triple Whale and Replo. Triple Whale is a source of truth for data that helps you make better decisions from integration with your most important platform, e-commerce training, AI. Triple Whale helps you find the exact data points you need with customization and personalization to fit your business. Replo is an e-commerce platform designed to supercharge Shopify stores. It offers a toolkit for serious e-commerce teams, allowing them to create ultra customizable landing pages, launch campaigns faster, and free up developers to focus on more complex features. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, Sean, and uh, yeah, please take it away. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. Thanks, Justin. Appreciate the intro. Anyone that is not familiar with, with Audit or what we do, um, I'll just do a really brief kind of intro. Um, essentially our, what we do is, is we go into e-com experiences and we provide as much kind of fresh perspective as we can. It's what we call conversion design. So a lot of it is focused on optimizing your conversion rate and how we're doing that is generally just through simplifying the experience. And in, in most cases, just giving brands a more clear presentation of the customer journey and more clear presentation of copywriting and just making sure that everything that they're surfacing on site is really easy to understand. I'm gonna just dive right in. Does anyone have any questions or anything about audit or anything before I jump in? Everyone just make sure you're on mute. Um, unless you're speaking just because there's a few. Peter, are you on do you wanna give me any background on the on the brand or site at all? Are you there, Peter? Uh yeah, so uh site launched, we've gone through a couple iterations of the site. Um it is a CPG uh B2C consumer site, as you can see. Uh, mm -hmm. focused on um, women's um, women's menstrual care um, and uh, yeah we're just excited to see what you guys uh, what you think about it amazing I'm, I'm gonna guess most of the products are sorry most of the traffic is is mobile it is yeah yeah um, over um, uh, over 90 percent actually sweet okay I'm gonna look at mobile um, okay so one of the comments I had on the last one was I always end up, I click on the link and then I just start talking and then we get stuck at the top of a single page and I never move. So I'm going to try and jump around as much as possible. But if you, whoever was site reviewing, if you have like a specific thing you want me to look at or an area where you feel like you're struggling, feel free to voice it. Um, or do you want me to just kind of go into it, uh, Peter, or is there a certain area that you'd prefer that I look at? Um, in the yeah, you can. Yeah, you can just jump right in. Okay, I'm gonna go for just one small comment here. I'm gonna guess um, that they're coming from a paid ad that tells them what you sell, so it's probably not as big of a deal. Um, and no clue if you're even driving paid traffic to the home page or product page. But um, even when you are featuring an offer, even if it's saving money, whatever try and still communicate what you're doing some in a lot of cases like this is the only section of the site that every user that lands on the site sees so they need to be very clear what you sell and and you know how to get it so this is as an example if i'm using a device like this and they miss this line right here and they land here and they again landed here from a, a organic traffic or something it could be selling, you know, this kind of looks like a candle. It could be anything in that box. It could be underwear, it could be this shirt, it could be chairs that lean back. Obviously I'm just being an idiot, but like you want to be really clear what you sell, even though if they came from an ad and you're assuming that they clicked on something that they wanted, you want to make sure you're communicating that in every case. Um, I'm gonna go to these bundles. Okay, so first thing I would note here Whenever you're looking at this section of a product page, and this goes for every brand on the call, anything that you're surfacing from that top to this add to cart button, you got to ask yourself, is it helping them click add to cart? It's just, it's as simple as that, right? So when you're adding images here, when you're adding videos here, when you're anything that's going into 
this first section before they hit add to cart, it needs to either help them add to cart or it's deleted. So if we just go through really quickly, right? Title, leak proof bikini. Okay, so tell me what it is. Obviously very critical. How many reviews in the score? Very critical. What I'm getting at is this piece right here. Write a review. You're giving them an action that has nothing to do with adding to cart. It's completely, you know, whether they accidentally click it, maybe they're trying to click reviews and they get scrolled down to read them, which is important for conversion. Maybe they accidentally hit it and now you've lost them because accidental clicks usually kill conversion. Um, them writing a review is usually a returning customer. You don't need to service this at the top of the page. Just delete this from right here. You probably already have it down here somewhere. Uh, if you don't, that's where it should be. So you don't have it down here. There should just be a write a review button here. It should not be at the top. Um, this is helpful information, helpful information, all helpful. All this is great. One thing I would try here when it comes to something like um, what I'll call underwear, I guess, um, is rather than giving a quantity selector, I would test just showing like by one, by two, by three. And you probably, as we saw on the homepage, already offer bundles. So you can actually communicate um, that pricing change right here and actually surface it and show it. So it'd be like one pair, uh, you know, $34, two pairs, $60, three pairs, $80. And you're just showing that incremental increase in discount. I think you'll see a higher AOV and you'll also probably see just more products out of the cart in general. And I'm not going to ramble too much on one site like I did last time. So we're going to move to the next one. Thanks for sharing, Peter. George, just quick, quick question. Um, thoughts yeah. on, that, on Afterpay and proving the validity of it as a, as a, uh, would you A-B test Afterpay? Or would you just kill it? You know, it, allowing people to pay in um, increments helps. I find it has a positive effect on conversion. I will say it, it really definitely depends on how easy you make it. So <clears throat> for, for example, showing it here, and, and again, if we just pretend you can't see anything else on this page and we're just looking at that, make for interest-free payments of 850 with Afterpay. It's kind of the standard styling of the whatever plugin they give you. And mm -hmm. it doesn't feel actionable, right? You're just making a statement, right? It's, it's no different than your headline. It's just a statement. You're not actually prompting them to do anything. And so if it's not having a really great effect on conversion, it's probably because people are seeing it and then it's just not becoming easy to use. So what we always recommend is like, have an add to cart button and then just have a secondary button that you've styled yourself that says, you know, pay 850 a month with Afterpay, right? Big green button, just make your own. Because the way that it's surfaced here, and you probably, that exists, I'm guessing, in maybe it's cart or maybe it's your checkout process. It doesn't here, but I'm sure it doesn't check out. You would probably give the option. Let me just see. Yeah, so it's it's actually not here. So that's probably the issue why maybe not working is I actually have no way to do it unless I click that tiny line in the product page, which is going to get lost. Um, but even getting to that part of the checkout, it's not every user that adds to cart, right? This needs to be more prominent, more accessible, and easier to do or it's just never gonna have a positive effect. But I definitely would keep it. It's definitely something that's gonna help conversion. Um, it just needs to be more accessible. Great, thanks, Sean. No worries. Uh, Jonas Vonk, you do knives. Are you, on, are you still on, Jonas? Hey, yeah, uh, thanks. Um, so we sell Japanese steel knives that were based in the UK. Um, yeah, any feedback on especially the homepage and product page would be uh, appreciated. Amazing. Okay, I'm just going to scroll the homepage really quickly before I start talking. Okay. So, one thing we always comment on when we're talking through uh, the content, especially on homepages and product pages, is trying to be as specific as possible and, you know, never assuming that the customer knows the difference between your product and perhaps a lower product or a lower quality product or just any alternate really. So when you're writing copy, 
always got to ask yourself if it's adding value to the experience. So if we just go through this headline, for instance, your first headline is use your knives, right? It's telling them nothing, right? They already, they clicked on a link that was advertising use your knives. They see your logo that says use your knives. They don't need to be told your brand name again. So first thing is I would just completely delete that. It has no value. It's telling them nothing. Take your cooking to the next level with Japanese steel knives. That's probably a better headline, right? So if we replace use your knives with that, um, that would be my start point because it tells them just kind of a, a blanket statement of what you do. You make Japanese steel knives. Now you're saying take cooking to the next level. I think it's important if you can to add some content here that's just like, here's two or three key traits of this product that justify the price, right? Because it's not a cheap product. And that make it, you know, taking cooking to the next level, right? You're telling them that it's going to do something better than they're used to day to day. You got to tell them why or how it's doing that. As simple, it can be super simple, right? Just whatever, uh, lifetime guaranteed steel, never rust, never, whatever. I'm not sure exactly, but whatever you're constantly preaching about this product or whatever your customers are constantly saying they love about it in reviews, pull those two or three things in up here and make sure that they're communicated along with this new headline. And then the last thing, make sure this button is more visible. I know it's dumb because obviously we're all looking at this being like, yeah, we're not, we can see the button, it's there. Um, but the, the more visible and loud it is when someone's scrolling really fast, the more it's gonna get clicked. Um, I'm just gonna go to product page quickly. Love this little upsell. Is there any, so if I'm buying one Jonas, if I'm buying this knife versus the uh, three pack, what's my price difference? So nice. there's a 50, 50 pounds uh, discount. I'm not sure in Canadian. 50 pounds, so what's the percentage? It's like 20%. 20%. So it says it's sold out, so I correct, I may be wrong that this just isn't showing because um, it's sold out, but I love the idea of adding a sheath. However, I would upsell the bundle when they're on the single product first. So 157 pad, and then here I would say, you know, buy all three and save 20%. And then let's say they add the cart. Here is where I would upsell the sheath. So rather than overwhelming them with multiple like pushes or upsells, you're upselling kind of from one knife to three knives. And then when they add to cart, you're hitting them in here with the add-in of the sheath or even a pop-up, right? This could come in as an interstitial and be like, hey, our lights, our, our knives have a lifetime warranty, but we still want them, you know, you still want to protect them. You know, get our our beautiful wooden, what do you say, wooden size sheet um, to protect your you know, your cabinets or your drawers that they're sitting in or, you know, whatever the, you know, the push is to why they need that, that sheath. Um, but I think in the individual knife spot, I think it'd be you'd probably have a better time upselling the three pack and then remove this. So remove your quantity selector instead of trying to sell two of this knife, just try and constantly sell, upsell them on the three pack um, when they're on a single page, uh, single product product page. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's great. Thanks so much. One last comment that I would say on a product like this, where it's really simple visually, right? So if I customers looking at this, they're like, okay, it's a knife. I know what a knife looks like. It's tough for them, a user to understand what the big differences are. And if they don't read the entire page, they need to understand that. So I would have a product image in here that's the product shown vertically, so the knife like this, it can be on a background like this, so maybe just rotate this one and extend the background and just point out what makes it great. Like, what is this stippling? Why is that important? Why is it just, maybe it's just there to be cool, like whatever. What is this brown part? Is it just a color band? Is it a piece of steel that goes into wood? Point out unique things about this that make it great um, because not every user is going to scroll down and, and I'm sure this is all right here. Right? But not everyone's going to scroll down. Hand forged, that's really cool. Second, something's done by hand, I can justify the price better, right? So, and again, if they're only seeing this section down to here, 
they just know that it's a knife. They don't know that it's hand forged. So you can use this gallery as an opportunity to communicate some of those things in case they don't get lower in the page. Does that make sense? Yeah, great. Thanks. Awesome. Uh, Brooklyn, Tom, I'm apologize. I'm going to save you for the end because we just did a report um, for Kate uh, Hugo. Uh, so I'm going to give uh, some of these brands that I haven't seen before a little uh, a little bit of feedback if that's okay. Flowers. Kenny, I'm not sure if your name is Kenny or if that's just the brand account, but whoever's on the call from Kenny Flowers, um, anything you want me to focus on? Hey, thanks for uh, checking us out. I'm Kenny, um, founder of Kenny Flowers. Uh, we're a you know fun, upscale, tropical luxury resort wear brand. Started out with men's, but women's has been a real growing space for us in the last few years. Um, we have, you know, kids, golf, lots of kind of offer in the space, depending on what you're looking for. Um, mm -hmm. So I would say definitely just open to get um, get your sense or hot takes on everything from probably more like navigation, being able to like get to things you're looking for um, yep. as, well as any other comments along the way. We're about to kind of re-up our site a little bit. So good cool. timing. Awesome. Perfect. Um, I, I could have used this last year when we were built a few actually two years ago we were building audit from uh baja mexico and I'm, a lot of days we weren't wearing anything but this type of shit so i wish i would have known about it um <laughs> the uh the first thing i'll say is and and this is more, this is a blanket statement it's not necessary for this brand but i think carousels are tricky some they do work for some brands um i think the two things i will note that if you do keep one on your new site that you should Keep in mind is they're likely uh, very clunky, and so when I say clunky, I mean heavy. Heavy means they slow your site down. Slowing your site down means affected conversion, having drop off from ads. There's a lot of different things that could, that can mean. Um, we're not obviously deep enough into it for me to tell you exactly, but that's usually what that means. The second thing to consider is that if you're going to have one, just don't automate it. I know it. It's it's kind of one of those things where at this stage in the customer journey. If you're communicating too much, you're likely communicating nothing. It's kind of like, um, you know, those agencies that tell you they do everything. It's likely they do all those things shitty um, or half-assed. And they do, whereas if they did one thing really well, they're probably amazing at it. And that's usually the experience. Um, not saying that you do everything half-assed. I'm just saying that by not focusing the user's attention on kind of exactly what you do, which you, you do a little bit here, right? But this is can be overwhelming and that automation of going through it on its own you're assuming that every reader is reading i'm sure the developer whoever built it is looking at it and saying okay you know put it in front of three people and everyone read this how long did it take okay average was four seconds so we're going to make the carousel automate every four seconds um but that's it one it's too fast as it is right now you're assuming that they're like landing on the page and just instantly reading they're probably exploring a little bit before they do. So there's probably some frustration happening where this is automating before they're done reading and they don't even know if it's for them. Mm -hmm. Long, long winded way of saying, I would just delete it. I would have a focused offer. So like if, and, and this is more of a brand comment than a UX comment, but like if you can't figure out what to feature there, that's more of an, <laughs> a, a, a product issue. You should be able to feature one thing. You should not have to feature four at once. Um, so it's more of just like a what we see ourselves being used for is brands that can't make a decision. I'm not saying you can't. It's probably just a functionality you have on your site, but it's it's much going to be much more um, profitable for you to just make a decision on like what's the what's the front runner, right? What's the leader? What's our best seller? What's everyone excited about? What are, every brand has that product where it's like everyone landed on the site because of this. It's probably the best thing to leave with. Mm -hmm. Um. And, and to, on that note, I, that's kind of the next thing I would do here is you have a ton of cool different collections from different um, patterns, obviously men's and women's, shirts, dresses, shorts, um, a little bit of everything. I, I think it can be overwhelming when you land on a brand like this and you're exploring. And one thing that I think is really easy to just push users to is just to say, shop our best sellers. It's kind of one of the 
when someone's new to a brand and they see this overwhelming amount of products, the easiest way for them to find what they need or at least explore is to see what everyone else loves about it. It kind of gives this trust of like, okay, they're successful in selling these other people like these, whether they're thinking, okay, it must be in style or that must be their best product. It helps remove that barrier of exploration. So yeah. somewhere up here, I would probably, you know, add a section even like right here above this to just say like shop our best sellers, the season's best sellers, whatever that looks like. Mm -hmm. Tons of reviews, which is amazing. You get a lot of reviews with images in them? Um, some. We don't like over prioritize incentivizing that or anything, but there's definitely lots of customers who like to share images. So one thing I would do is, and this is consistent across any brand, apparel, mm -hmm. whatever, the more that you can feature real people wearing it versus models, the better. Obviously you have to find a balance, right? These are beautiful. Like, you know, you paid money for these, they were are directed, like they're very well done. They show the product well, they're natural. But I think it's always important to show the reality of the product. Mm -hmm. You know, these people have been styled to look perfect. And I think in a lot of cases that doesn't sell as well as seeing just Joe Blow or, you know, or Jane Doe in that shirt or whatever. Um, and so one thing I would do, and, and this is supposed for all brands is default filter these reviews to always show, show the, uh, photos at the top. So whatever ones have an image, filter those up here. And I'm can't tell which app this is, but I'm guarantee they probably have a function where you can have a quick selector here of just reviews with photos and you can just scroll through customer photos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I would, yeah, I'm sure they do. I would, um, I would also pull a few in up here. So it's fine. It, you have, these are all great. Um, but I would just pull in a few more natural customer photos. My, the other thing to consider, my friend is going to be, my friend, my friend's head is going to grow so big from you saying all <laughs> the things. Cause that's actually, <laughs> but professionally shot, like you were saying. Yeah. And it, it, I think it, the other thing that in this, again, goes for any brand with a product page, whenever you're curating the photos for here, there's no like perfect formula, but you got to ask yourself every time you add, so let's just start at the start here. Every time you add a photo or you're curating another image or getting another image or uploading another image for this, ask yourself, is it telling or giving them more information than the, than the image before it, right? So every single time I scroll here, it needs to be adding value. Otherwise you're wasting their time. You're wasting their time. You're losing conversion. So this image shows me the product, shows me it, you know, in a certain state, right? It's blowing in the wind. I see the pattern. <clears throat> this one gives me a nice close up so I can see the pattern more closely, a little bit more about the actual fabric. This one is standing still. So you could argue that it's unique. This one's showing a pocket. So again, you're showing another piece of the product that maybe they didn't see in these other images. So these are all good. This one's telling me nothing extra, right? This one's just showing the same guy in the same shirt. So instant delete. So that one's not doing anything. Same thing. This is just showing the same pattern of distance, not adding any value, delete, not adding any value, delete. This shows me I can wear it with my buddy, not adding value, delete. This one is showing me it can be worn on unisex and has a pairing product, definitely adding value. Same thing, no value, delete. And that photo, I'm pretty sure we've seen already, so delete. So again, I'm being very dramatic and fast about this. You don't have to do all this, but the point I'm trying to get across is half these photos aren't telling, aren't adding any value. You could replace all of those with customer review, a video of someone wearing it, like a GIF, um, uh, an overhead shot of the product, like laying on sand and like little arrows pointing to like, you know, whatever, cell phone pocket, you know, stretch material, water wicking, whatever. I'm just making up shit. I don't know anything about it, but pointing out things that make it unique or cool. Um, cause it's, it's not a, it's not a cheap shirt. Right. So I'm guessing there's some really great stuff about it. Absolutely. I hope all that was helpful. Yeah. Very. No, I appreciate it. Always good. Just getting, uh, you know, someone that wishes that a shirt a year ago's eyes on the site, <laughs> let alone an expert in the field. Awesome. Oh, there's a lot in here. Everyone that I don't get to, just please go on the site and submit for a quick link. So we'll, we'll do a little quick mock-up for you.
Okay, select bands. Wayne Miller, are you on the call still? Yeah, I'm there. Awesome. You want to give me a little background? Yeah, so we focus in on selling. These are Apple Watch bands. It's a specific type. It's a nylon band. comes in mm -hmm. different styles and colors. It's one of our lines. And we also have what we call our Lux line, which is geared more to a female audience. It's more jewelry type uh, Apple Watch bands. As you scroll through, you get to see the different products. Perfect. Is there anywhere you want me to focus? Not specifically, no. Two things here, or a few things. First off, this is a really cool looking product. Um, same comments as, as, uh, Kenny Flowers. I think there's probably some added images you could, you could have here. Usually, and this, I'm not saying this is the case, but usually when a product has no lifestyle photography, it means that it's just a reseller and they've never even seen the product. It's very common. It's not an issue. I'm just saying it, it sends the wrong signal to users. I would highly recommend just people don't need to necessarily understand how big this is on a wrist. If they're buying an Apple Watch band, they know how big the Apple Watch is. But seeing it on a wrist and how it sits, you know, all of that can be really helpful in comparison to a professional render or a professional studio shot like this. So first thing is just add some lifestyle shots. If you don't have UGC, totally fine. Just anything that gives it a little more like human approach. Um, this piece is awesome, but everyone that's ever been on these calls knows I always say don't make your customers do math. So $30 is half of 60. Everyone on here probably knows that. But again, every time you make your user think about that, you're just delaying communication. Just say 50% off. It's just easier to understand. They don't have to do the math. Let them move on. Um, oh, let's see. Hey, what's wrong? this is a great, I love this, but it's much more effective below, um, further down. One of the things you're doing that can be, it may feel like it's a big conversion driver, but probably isn't helping is you got the add to cart here always. And I apologize if it's just doing this cause I'm on a desktop, but I'm guessing it's the same on a mobile device. Um, this pop in is is a distraction taking up space and it's actually not you're probably getting accidental add to carts and they haven't picked their color size um, or watch size yet so it's probably killing conversion what i would suggest is optimize all of these sections to be easier to understand and put your add to cart on page right here right between find your wrist and sizing runs large or right here maybe either way Put it on page and then once they scroll past that then it pops in because you're essentially saying hey add to cart but they haven't picked anything so it's likely they're getting the wrong product right because it's not one size fits all it's not one color um and it's not one apple watch so this button actually can't be clicked when they load the page it, sorry it can but it's likely they're getting the wrong color um so in that case you're going to want to move this down because it's taking up a lot of space as great as it is, and as and I'm you know I'm happy you're doing it, it's not helping conversion when it's taking up this much space. So just move it further below the add to cart. These two color selectors, if there's very few scenarios where I'm going to be able to see the image change on mobile, right? Unless they're right at the bottom, I can see. So and let's just say they're here. All they're seeing is these two colors that I'm sure everyone on this call, I hope, agrees. It's really tough to tell the difference, right? They're just both kind of me rainbow multicolor bracelets, right? So two things here. It should just be pick a pick a name, right? Because they're both multicolored. Both could easily be called rainbow or multicolored. So maybe you just come up with more unique differentiating names of what the difference is. Um and then also just it it needs to somehow be closer to this because it's really hard to tell that close up. Like if I go like this, it's easier for me to see the differences, but in this state, it's not. So these need to be more connected with the gallery. You probably get a lot of feedback on this from customers, but I would, I would pick whatever is the most simple way to define your wrist size and just use that. I feel like that was a really complex explanation for just here's how you measure your wrist size. Um, but you probably have tons of customer feedback on what's working and what's not just my two cents there. So this is interesting. So if I buy two, I get one free, but you don't give them the option of buying multiples here. So maybe something to consider there. I'm sure you 
done that strategically and maybe it's once they go to cart. So here's another interesting piece. You've told them it's two, one free, buy two, get one free. But technically then if I add this to cart, I get another one free. The best way to get me to add this to cart is to tell me that, right? So instead of saying, okay, we'll add the solid loop, I should be saying, you know, add this black one and then we'll let you pick a third one free. You're going to see a way higher conversion on this. Not easy to execute, but definitely would be worth it. Um, okay, I'm going to stop there and move to the next one. I hope that was helpful. Very much so. Thank you. I apologize if people are asking questions in chat because I'm only just clicking through sites. So Taylor, if anyone asks something that I need to answer, just pretzel co. I feel like I audited this a really long time ago when we first started on it. Is Lily on the call still? Yep, I'm here. Hey, Lily. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, give me a little background, if you don't mind. Um, we started the Pretzel Co. during COVID. We initially had a storefront bakery and switched to e-commerce because of the shutdown. So now we do mostly boxes sent to home, all 50 states. Um, we also are on QVC, so that drives part of our sales. Um, when mm -hmm. we're not launching there, but otherwise we offer a pretty small selections of products and boxes, but they seem to do well for us. Uh, we just kind of pride the brand on being simple and we send yeah. everything fresh the day we make it. So just kind of trying to see where we can drive sales on the site since we have so few product offerings, but we're good at what we do. So we're not really trying to expand on like anything but pretzels, but you know, just some feedback yeah. there. No, that's, I mean, these are the best products. I, I think you, they look great and they look delicious. So you've, you've done the hard part, which is making a good product. I think this feedback I'm giving is the easy part to do. It's, it's very actionable and, um, you know, you can kind of implement it immediately. Um, so I think the main comment I have, and this goes for anyone is when someone lands here, you want to make sure there's a hierarchy of information and a hierarchy of actions. So what I mean by that is I'm introducing the pretzel co I'm showing this braid box, which is looks delicious. I'm guessing this is clickable. Maybe. Yes. So it's clickable, but it's really not clear, right? Cause it kind of just looks like an image, like just a product image. So if I'm a user, how what I would have done if I wasn't analyzing this, I would have seen this, saw this box and like, Ooh, those look good. Then the first action, at least visually, that I'm getting is to subscribe to a newsletter. Now, my guess is your, you know, in your little, like in your business plan, it does not say get newsletter subscribers is your main conversion goal. Your main conversion goal is to sell pretzels. So this should be buried at the bottom of this page as, as, okay. as great as it is. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was saying, okay, I gotcha. Yeah, I, I think. And you have a pop-up to do the, to upsell the same thing. So I would even maybe just totally delete this band. Um, and I would just move this big, beautiful button right here, connect to this. So that it's really clear that you have a new product. It's called the braid box and you can shop it right here. And again, I know this is an action, but most users, are, it just doesn't display as an action. It just looks like an image. Um, so that's, that's what I would do. The other thing I would add in here because all of these, again, they look so delicious. The branding looks great, but you're not telling me really much about them until down here. Um, so it, and again, this is just core ingredients. Maybe there's some key traits about them. Like, like you said, they, they ship day of order, right? Like maybe a little band below that shop button that we're moving up. It just says like ships next day, made fresh to order, like whatever those things are, that's like, okay, I can buy one of six pretzels online. Why am I buying the pretzel company, right? Are they really fresh? Is the salt made, whatever. All the things that make them unique or special or why people are just salivating over them. Call that out right above because, you know, having a new product is not necessarily a compelling enough selling feature for someone new to the brand, if that makes sense. Your number one issue here is you're not telling them how many they get until here and it's kind of buried so i would literally just on image one here just have a i call it a sticker a little icon right maybe it's this little red and just says you know 12 braid box or includes 12 
pretzels. Would, would anything that's just like, as soon as they land, they're like, okay, it's a box. It's got this many in it. I, you never want them. You do not want a user looking at this first image and being like, one, two, three, counting these. That's very bad. And you definitely don't want them hunting in this content for it because now they're past this, right? And that's where we want them. Oh man, look at all these flavors. You guys ship to Canada? Unfortunately not. <laughs> oh. Taylor and I are big pretzel fans. Okay, so the the quantity is number one. I would test, this may, I'm not guaranteeing this is gonna help, but it will definitely help communication. Show the price per pretzel here. So $48 in brackets, $4 per pretzel. Um, is this changing from one site? Oh, so these are different prices, interesting. So is vanilla glaze the only one that's a dollar more? Yes, yeah, so that's something we just introduced and the cost per is a little bit more than the mustard's cost. I would test showing price in this list. So this one says 48, this one says 47, 47, 47, and this, says 42 just because right now because there is three different prices within that list it's really all discovery <clears throat> and so if you think of it <coughs> from just an interaction level in this scenario in order for them to understand the price of 10 items they have to make 10 clicks in my scenario in order for them to understand the price of 10 items, they just have to make one click. They just click here and it tells them all the prices. So if you just think of that from like a people that are on time on on your site for a short amount of time with proper communication, they're converting higher. You're giving them all the information they need. As soon as they click that, they're not clicking through. And even like let's say they started here and they clicked here and they see it go up a dollar. They're it, it's small. But it's affecting conversion, right? They're frustrated. They thought it was 47. Now it's a dollar more. And so now they're like, oh, I wonder if the other ones are deeper. And now they're doing what I'm doing, clicking 10 times. And it's not helping. Um, so again, super small thing, probably really easy for you to edit, but it will probably help. Um, I would add an image here that shows all 12 flavors or 10 flavors, even if they all look the same. Like, just imagine it, <coughs> excuse me, you know, 10 pretzels standing vertically and all of them just have a little label above them, like whatever mustard, whatever. Just seeing them all together like that as the options, I think um, could be a really great additional image here. And then also add an image in here that's a, a review. I would also do that. And I'm going to move to the next one. Thanks for sharing, Lily. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, Luke from the Who List. Yep. Hey, so Who List, my company, doing well. Thank you. We uh, we're a wellness uh, technologies company. We sell, excuse me, we sell non-invasive nerve stimulators. And in particular, what's called a vagus nerve stimulator. So when you stimulate your vagus nerve, it essentially tells your body to calm down and relax. And so this page that you're looking at right now, this is what they, this is our collections page that I've rebuilt on Replo. Mm -hmm. um, this is what they see after they've clicked on a Facebook or an Instagram ad. And then I've also rebuilt our product pages. Our homepage <clears throat> is still just using a typical Shopify template. But if you were able to look at either of those two pages, that would be awesome. Very cool. So, and this is me more interested. Like, what is the pain? Is it what is it doing? Like, is it like a taser? I don't. I not that painful. But like, what is it doing when I put it on my? Yeah, it's it's very similar to a tens unit, um, but it's outputting a specific electrical frequency that hits the vagus nerve, and you can see in those images, it's just. It runs, I guess it runs throughout a lot of your body, but um, it's really large right below your ear. And so if you hit it right there, you'll feel kind of like a buzzing or a tingling sensation. That's actually feels awesome. <laughs> it's really pleasant. And if your body's in this heightened fight or flight response, or if you're anxious, 
Um, it essentially brings you down. It's a drug free sure. way to just calm down. Really interesting. Very cool. Okay. Let's, uh, let's go through this. So find the best room. Okay. So first thing, um, this is kind of a list, but it's almost displayed as a broken paragraph. So when we talk about that, um, you know, that information hierarchy, you're, you're essentially starting off by saying, Hey, like which one of these is good for you. Um, but you're not necessarily guiding them towards the best product outside of like, I'm guessing this one gets clicked more because it's cheaper or maybe this one gets clicked more because no one scrolls. Um, so I think you've got to find a better way to communicate the differences. Um, it may be as simple as just displaying them side by side and having a, like if I could see the prime and the mini just side by side and then just like three check marks below each and the, and the, you know, shop prime, shop mini. Right. I think, I think you'd get probably a higher conversion click through on both. Um, and even these buttons, right? Like these are different products, different prices. Aside from them looking bigger and smaller, they look the same, right? Unless you look closely, there's a few different aspects, but like they look the same. Um, it needs to be really clear and have like a really crystal clear frame and frame of like, which one is best for me? Cause you're saying find the one best for you, but you're really not guiding them enough um best in class for long-term value i don't know what that means you know what i mean like is it is it because this one i use for 30 days before i notice something and this one's instant what like, there's not enough communication here and i literally have never heard of anything like this before so and I'm not saying i'm your target but i'm assuming most customers or people landing on this cold probably haven't either right or some of them um so i think speaking more plainly and 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 just direct, I think is going to be really critical in, in getting more clicks on this. Did you say to go to the product page or you just want me to review this one? Sorry. That'd be great. Yeah. If you were to okay. click on a product page too. Thank you. Okay. Let's, let's go. Very similar comment to, um, the Kenny Flowers gallery. You always got to think, is it adding value? Right. I think you show it with the, you know, this lid pops off. Um, this is probably a better image because it shows it with the, the hands. You could probably just remove this one. And then you show it one, two, kind of three times on the, behind the ear and then once going in the pocket. So you could probably remove two of the behind ear images, in my opinion. Maybe, maybe just once. So there's one female, one male. Um, but I would use the gallery as an opportunity to communicate a little bit more about it. Like show the product with the cap off. And then just some bullet points around like, like just how you explain it to me. It simula it stimulates this, makes you feel calm within. The biggest big question I have after everything you told me still is how fast does it work, right? If I just pulled that thing out of my pocket right now on this call because I'm stressed out talking to everyone, wondering if they sound like I'm an idiot, and I put it right here, like am I just like calm in one second, 10 seconds, 20 minutes? How long am I holding it there? That's my main question with this, and I'm sure other people have that question. So. Anything you can have in the, in that image or images, it gives a little more communication about it. Um, the other question I have is, does it make noise, right? So maybe a GIF or a, a UGC video of someone using this, showing them going from a stress state, putting it on, calming down. And, and again, is it beeping at me? Is it right. buzzing? Is there no noise? I want to know, um, cause that tells me where I can use it, right? Uh, if I'm in my office right now, which is, there's people in here, but it's dead quiet. Like, do I want them hearing a buzzing sound if it means buzzing or is that embarrassing? Right? So there's all these things going through my mind and obviously I'm being hypercritical because it's why we're here, but you got to think of these things because users are going to, you know, certain users are going to think it's, um, small thing, but just yellow text on white background is always just poor visibility. So I would just make that black or gray just so you can see it. Um, <clears throat> price, what, cart. Is there any, this might be just breaking because I'm in Canada. It says 547 and then, the, oh, four interest payments or 
36 months. So there's probably longer payment plans, I'm guessing. Yeah. That would get it down to 36. Okay. Right. Do you do but any, like, get one for yourself, buy one for your stressed out partner? Like, do you do any bundles? We don't. Uh, we want to do that. We just haven't built that out. But. Yeah, I definitely, so it's I can, one of those products. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say an upsell or something like that would be great, I imagine, right there. Yeah, I think it's one of those things where, like, if you've got someone convinced to buy it, or maybe they already own one or like, they've heard great things about it. It is one of those products where I can definitely see people being like, oh man, I know so-and-so would really love this. I mean, obviously it's expensive, but um, having that like, you know, one is 400 US and one is, you know, two is seven or whatever that kind of bundle pricing is, I would definitely test that to see. Um, and rather than having this, just say, you know, 400 a unit, 350 per unit, you buy two or whatever the discount you're comfortable with is. Um, but I think you definitely see a little more traction on uh, multi, mul multiple unit orders if you're not already. Power on, my device. Yeah, I think all of that I hope was helpful, but I think the main thing is just a little more communication, simple, like uh, strip away the science. Just like, does it make sound? How fast does it work? How long does it last? Do I have to charge it? These just these simple things that really aren't that related to how effective it is necessarily, but just more communicating exactly what the user needs to know to make a conversion. Awesome. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. No worries. I think Justin, let's cap it there in case any like does anyone have any other questions or comments on anything they were like, this makes sense or I'm confused by this or anything like that? Justin, anything else you want to add before we? Uh... That's that's all. Um, thank you, everyone, for showing up today. I really appreciate it, and thank you, Sean and the audit team, for sharing your insights. Uh, and also want to thank Triple Whale and Replo for hosting the session. Uh, we'll see you all next month, and uh, hope you enjoyed today's event.